This is the first of the 2.1 videos where we're describing locations in a distribution. First, I'm gonna show you how to find what's called a percentile, then a standardized score, and then we're gonna talk about transforming data. So here is a list of data for, um, of the heights of my students, as well as myself from last year. So I have 20 total heights, including myself, which was 70 inches. The mean is 66.2 inches. Standard deviation is 3.24 inches. So a percentile is the percent of, of observations that fall below a certain score or below a certain observation. So to find the percentile for my height here, I'm gonna count how many are less than. So I'm not gonna count these three because they're the same height as me. I'm gonna count these that are less than mine, which there are 15 total. So since I have 20 heights, 15 are below, which would give me roughly the 75th percentile. So interpret what that means. I'll write it out here. So Mr. McGee's heights, my height is the 75th percentile because it is larger than 75% of the class heights. That's how we interpret what a, what a percentile is. Now let's talk about a standardized score. Standardized score, it tells the number of standard deviations an observation is away from the mean. So if it's above, it will be positive. It's, if it's below, it will be a negative standardized score. So remember the standard deviation is 3.24. So how many of these above the mean am I? So 66.2 is the mean. If you add one standard deviation, that's gonna take you to uh, 69 point, uh, what is that, 44. So you know I'm gonna be at least one standard deviation, but to find the exact number of standard deviations, we can use the Z-score formula. So the Z-score stands for uh, standardized score, and it's gonna be the observation minus the mean divided by standard deviation. That will tell you exactly how many standard deviations above or below the height will be. So my z-score or the z-score for 70 inches would be the observation is 70 minus the mean was 66.2 divided by the standard deviation was 3.24 which would be 1.17 standard deviations. Notice that this is, the units here is standard deviations, it's not inches. So interpret what the z-score means. Interpreting the z-score is just saying Mr. McGee's height is 1.17 standard deviations above the mean. The z-scores are helpful and can be helpful especially when we're describing two different data sets Here's a, here's a good example of what I mean by that. If we look at the English Premier League statistics from 2018 and 19, Mohamed Salah won the golden boot for scoring the most, most goals. He scored 22 goals. Um, and Eden Hazard also had a successful season and led the league in assists with a total of 15 assists. So which of these two is more impressive, scoring 22 goals or having 15 assists? The way we can do that is compare them relative to um, the top 50 scorers and the top 50 assisters in the league. So among the top 50 scorers, the average number of goals from them was 11.28 and had a standard deviation of 4.33. And the mean number of assists from the top 50 assists was 6.98 with a standard deviation of 2.43. So if we find the standardized score from these two different distributions, it will help us to know which one was better relative to their average. So let's find the z-score for Mohamed Salah first. So I'm gonna denote an S for Salah. He had 22 goals minus the mean was 11.28. And the standard deviation was 4.33. So Mohamed Salah had a Z-score of 
Eden Hazard. I'm going to call with a denote his with an H for Hazard. And he had 15 compared to the mean was 6.98. Standard deviation was 2.43. So he had a z-score of 3.30. So Eden Hazard's um, number of assists was more impressive than goals because his standard, standardized score was larger than Mohamed Salah's. Notice they're both positive because they're both above the mean. So the last, the last um, objective I want to look at is transforming a, a distribution. And I'm going to start with a simple example here. This, that, this is the data set that I'm going to transform. First, I'm going to add two to all of the observations in the distribution and just see how the mean and the range changes. Remember, the mean is a measure of center and range is a measure of spread. So you can look here and you can see that the mean of this distribution is three because it's the balancing point. So the mean is three and the range would be four minus two. So the range is two. Now let's say we're going to add two to each of these observations. So this two is gonna jump up to four. And the middle two are gonna jump up the five and the maximum from the first distribution will be jumping up to six. So each of these just increased by two. So now you can see the center, the mean is going to be at five and the range stayed the same because now it's gonna be six minus four. So adding a constant to a, a distribution, it changes measures, points of location like the mean, the center is increased by two, but the range stayed the same because everything shifted the same amount. So measures of spread don't change when you're simply adding a constant. Let's see what happens when I multiply everything by two. So now I'm gonna multiply the, the first two by two, which would take me a four. And then I'll multiply these two threes by two, and that will take me up to six. I'll move both of them up. Now I'll multiply four by two, which will take me to eight. So you can see how the distribution changed from the original one. It got more spread out, and the mean and the max and the min, and all the measures of location increased as well. So if I multiply by two, the mean for this data set now has become six, and the range has gone from eight to four. So the range has doubled. So if I multiply, that's going to increase the range or the spread by that same multiple. And it's going to increase the center or the points of location by that same multiple. So two times three got us this six, two times two got us this four. And the last example, we're going to do both at the same time. So I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to add two to each of these observations in the data set. So the first one, I'm gonna take this two times two would be four, and then add two more, and that's gonna take us up to six. So that's why I'll put point here on six. I'll do the same for the observations at three, and that's gonna make them jump up to eight. And then the last one, of course, will be at 10. So the way I did this, I, I took four times two is eight, added two and got me to 10. So now what is the mean and the range of this distribution? The mean appears to be at eight and the range is from 10 to six is four. So the takeaways from this simple example problem is when you multiply, the data set becomes more spread out, the spread changes, and the points of location. The minimum increases, the median increases, the mean increases, the max increases. 
But when I add a constant, the data set doesn't get any more spread out. It all shifts up equally. So the mean for this last one, I would multiply two times three and add two to get eight. But the range, I'm only going to do the multiplication. Two times two gives me this four. The addition does not change the spread. And that's what these points here are going to highlight. Next of adding and subtracting, it, does, it never changes the shape and it does not change the spread. So measures of spread would be range, IQR, standard deviation. Those will all stay the same if you're just adding a constant. But measures of center and location, so the mean, the mean, and the quartiles, percentiles, those will all increase by whatever you're adding by. If we're multiplying or dividing, multiplication changes the measures of center and location. So mean, median, quartiles, percentiles, those will all change by whatever you're multiplying by. It also changes the measure of spread. So range, IQR, standard deviation, those will all change by whatever you're multiplying by. But it is important to note that the shape does not change for multiplying or uh, adding or subtracting. So let's continue with the first data set that we had. These are the heights of um, the heights that we used in the very first problem. So suppose we remeasured each student's height in the class and required everyone to wear two inch heels. Yeah, even the guys. How would this change the distribution of heights? So what would happen to the measures of center, the spread and locations, the percentiles and z-scores? So basically what we're doing is we're taking that first data set and we're adding two to everybody's height. So here are the summary statistics of their heights. So minimum is a point, is a point of location in the data set. So points of location are going to change. They're going to increase by two. So I'm going to add two to all the points of location. So this will now be 63. Q1 is a point of location, so I'm going to add 2, and that would be 65.5. The median will also increase by 2, 68.5. Q3 will increase by 2. The max will increase by 2. The mean will increase by 2. But the standard deviation will not change because that is a measure of spread. So this will be the only thing that hasn't changed by adding. Uh, multiplying or dividing. So suppose we want to distribute the class heights in centimeters instead of inches. How would this change the distribution of heights? So now we're going to write the summary statistics. If we were to multiply everybody's heights in inches by 2.54. So you should remember if we're multiplying, then everything will change. Points of location, and measures of spread. But I guess not everything because shape, the shape will stay the same. So really all I'm gonna do is multiply the original values by 2.54. And now we'll convert it to centimeters. Now all of the summary statistics are listed in centimeters. Um, you should take a moment and try the independent practice problems down here. Uh, or I'm sorry, they're at the they're after these. Try these independent practice problems right here. <laughs> 